We have breaking news. We now know the firearm, according to reports, that was used by the anti-Trump guy who tried to assassinate President Trump on Sunday, that apparently the serial number has been obliterated or partially obliterated. Now, this is a big deal because it's going to play a role in the October 8th oral argument in the Vanderstock case before the U.S. Supreme Court. So let's connect some dots when we get right back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of the brand new best-selling book, Israel Disarm, What the 10-7 Attacks on Israel Teach Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. Check it out on Amazon. All right, folks, so you've been tracking this news report, the story about the attempted assassination, the second one on President Trump's life down there in Florida. Uh, obviously, it appears as if we may know who did this, but I'm not going to name him. And, you know, facts are still being developed. But based on the reporting, it looks as if uh, he had a rifle that he was using to perpetrate this alleged crime. And uh, the rifle has now been recovered and this individual has now been brought into custody. Now, I want to connect a dot that nobody else is connecting up. There's a lot of places you can get great information out there about this story, and I'm not going to be redundant here. But I'm going to connect up a dot that nobody else is doing, and that is whether or not the anti-gun movement will try to use the fact that this firearm that this man was using or alleged to have used, that it had a partially or completely obliterated serial number. Will they use this? In the upcoming oral argument on October 8th, in the Garland versus Vanderstock case, the public safety argument made by the Harris Biden administration, the ATF and DOJ, is that they need more of these parts to be serialized because the serialization of guns, meaning serial numbers being placed on guns, is mission critical to them solving crimes. Now, this is a bunch of hooey. And let me be very clear about this, okay? I want to articulate something that I'm not sure has been properly articulated in the Second Amendment community until now. So let me be clear. The anti-gun movement wants the excuse or the pretext of tracing so that they can create a national gun registry of gun owners and guns. Hear what I just said? The pretext of tracing is not actually about being able to solve crimes. That's not true because it really doesn't happen. Tracing is not how crimes get solved. Crimes get solved by connecting up a gun with a bad guy, which almost always happens by virtue of what happened in Florida with eyewitness reports. A guy's like, hey, I saw that guy and I took a photo of him running out of the woods and that was his gun, right? Or a bad guy is captured with his gun or a bad guy is shot and his gun is beside him. Criminals generally don't leave guns behind because guns are valuable. And they may want to use it again or sell the gun or use it in their next crime. So the purpose of tracing, which as you know is supposedly that it allows law enforcement to type in the serial number of a gun they've recovered to try to figure out where it was sold. But of course all that does is gets it back to the original manufacturer and to the retailer and the wholesaler. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, you can connect the dots up to the first sale, but it doesn't tell you about anything that happened to gun after that. So keep in mind that the reason why I'm bringing this tracing issue up, and you're like, why are we talking about tracing? This is a very big deal because this is the excuse, the pretext, that the anti-gun movement in the Department of Justice and the ATF is using before the United States Supreme Court to justify their expanded definition of firearm under the Gun Control Act by virtue of regulations. So their argument before the U.S. Supreme Court is we need to be able to trace all these firearms and because these unserialized quote-unquote ghost guns that people make in their basements or the parts kits that they buy that they then in turn into a gun, we're not able to trace these and because we, law enforcement, cannot trace these, it's extreme danger to public policy. Now this is a whole bunch of hooey, bunch of hooey. But it's where they're going to go again. And the best example of this is just this morning, the Wall Street Journal wrote the following. You see where this is going? The Wall Street Journal's title of an article says, Suspected Trump gunman had rifle with scratched off serial number. Partially obliterated number has made it more difficult for investigators to trace the weapon. People familiar with the inquiry said. Bing, 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 bing. See what's going on here? 
The Wall Street Journal, The New York Times, all these places are going to be talking about how, wow, he obliterated the serial number and now we can't trace it. It's terrible for law enforcement. But actually this example illustrates the opposite point. It demonstrates the uselessness of tracing. Why do I say that? First of all, this alleged individual who is alleged to have committed the crime of attacking Donald Trump, he got this gun in the first place. And based on all the reporting, it's pretty clear that he was a felon who was not allowed to possess firearms. And yet somehow, as a criminal, still got guns. It just proves that, guess what? Gun laws don't stop criminals from doing bad things. We know this. We've known this as a country since before the American Revolution, when the Italian criminologist named Cesar Beccaria talked all about this. I've written articles on Cesar Beccaria. His points that says that anyone who's going to you know, commit a crime that's heinous is not going to care one iota about a gun ban. Doesn't care. Cesar Beccaria was studied by our founding fathers, including by Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. I talk all about this in my articles and more. So the point being that here's an example of a guy that got a gun, even though he was not legally allowed to have one because he was a felon. But beyond that, we now have this discussion of the obliterated serial number. But this just really proves the point of the absurdity of serialization of these guns. Because anyone that wants to commit a crime and wants the gun not to be traced for whatever reason, can do one of two things. He or she can readily obliterate the serial number with a, a Dremel tool or, or a, all sorts of other things. There's a bunch of ways it can be done, right? You can obliterate the serial number yourself if you don't want it to be traced. If you're a criminal, who cares? Yes, it's a crime to do what I just described, to destroy the serial number, obliterate the serial number, but so what? You're already going to commit a major crime like a killing the president, right? Or assassinating the president, or trying to assassinate the president, or committing some other murder or heinous act. So why is obliterating the serial number matter to you if you're going to commit such a malum, pro, a malum in say evil crime? But beyond that, you could obliterate yourself, or alternatively, you can buy a gun that's already had an obliterated serial number. Right? You can already do that. So the point is, the idea that forcing ordinary Americans to go through more and more background checks with 4473s to get gun parts is absurd because the truth is this is all about forcing more and more Americans to fill out those 4473 forms which if all you really care about when you do a background check is to make sure that Mark is not a criminal and not a prohibited person as defined by 18 USC 922 G all you need to do is run a background check but why do you need that additional information on those form 4473 that you always have to fill out when you acquire a gun from an FFL you know, the information about your background, of course, as well as the gun you're buying, the make and the model, and yes, the serial number. You see? So the point is that in the U.S. Supreme Court on October 8th, you can, you can mark my words on this and we'll see what happens. But my guess is it's going to be discussed in some way that this individual or other criminals are able to obliterate serial numbers. So what's the point of forcing all these people to go through this administrative headache of getting serial numbers when it's not going to do anything to thwart crime. And the idea that you need tracing to solve a crime is absurd. Here's a perfect example. There's no tracing needed to line up this guy that was arrested shortly after allegedly attacking President Trump with his gun. Again, it goes back to my point that the way people find out and solve crimes is through eyewitness testimony, which, by the way, he was identified by an eyewitness, right? And the gun, same thing. Eyewitness testimony, or they're shot with a gun beside them, or they're arrested with a gun in their possession. This is how guns are tied up to bad people. The idea that, you know, you can go on TV and you can type in, like, somebody's name and, like, ooh, the perpetrator's face comes up. Look at how smart we are. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, not exactly. That's not how it works in the real. So, again, the purpose of tracing of firearms has nothing to do, in my view, with public safety and solving crimes. Because I'm still looking for the data that shows that they can actually solve crimes with tracing. Where is that data from the federal government that says, hey, here's the number of crimes we solved in 2023 thanks to tracing. Where is that data? I haven't seen it. I'm looking for it. And that's because the reality is that the sound good nature of tracing is really simply a pretext or an excuse for the government to tell judges and others that this is going to help us solve crime and save lives, but it's BS. 
All it really is doing is allowing people and forcing people to fill out more and more 4473 forms, disclosing information about the gun, the make and the model, and the gun owner. All ultimately, the goal ultimately is to create a gun registry of, of guns and a gun registry of gun owners. That is the ultimate goal. Now, will they be able to get there? I'm not sure about that. Because channels like mine and others and other people are flagging these kinds of issues and I wanted you to connect the dots. And the reason why I did this video right here and right now is you can get lots of information about this uh, assassination attempt from other news sources. But the one thing you may not be getting is how they're going to try to spin this in the media with the serial number argument. And you make sure you're ready when you see this argument to push back and point out that no, it proves the point that tracing is unnecessary because there was no tracing needed to capture this guy. And again, the fact that it was obliterated, the serial number was obliterated, proves the point that criminals are going to just destroy the serial number if they really want to. And that's a crime in and of itself. And if they're going to commit murder or other terrible crimes, destroying the serial number is not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, if that's how you think. So there you have it, folks. Hope you learned something today. Uh, we will continue to cover the story. Make sure you follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner. And we will see you again very soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.